one that through Christ made us a conqueror, more than a conqueror. God is the one that through Christ gave us the victory. Well, you don't have the victor and you don't have the, the king and you don't have the winner, the champion, just sitting there and beaten, 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 take it, take it, take it. No, you're the one with the belt. You're already the winner. So we're not fighting for the victory. We're fighting from that standpoint and place of victory. And you resist him. You put him in his place because of the authority you have through your union with Jesus Christ. You resist him. You resist him and you put him in his place. So what's your responsibility with the devil? You resist him. And notice that God says, you don't have to do it in your own strength. You can do it with mine. Come on, guys. Remember, when it's you against the devil, it's just not you. When you got in Christed, when you got in him, now it's you, God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost against the devil. You're one with him. I've told you this story before. It's still one of my favorite stories I've ever heard. John Osteen told this story about, um, he, he, was, he said, I just kind of uh, come out of the Baptist church. And he said, I was, I was learning some of these things about these in Christ realities. And he said, one night I went to sleep. And he said, I had this dream. And in this dream, I was in this dark alley. And this man uh, came into this alley. He had a mask on. And he pulled out a gun. And he said, give me your wallet and everything you have in your pockets. And he said, as soon as he did that, he said, all of a sudden, Jesus appeared in between me and the robber. And he said, Jesus stood there with his arms out like this. And he said, and then Jesus began to take steps backward. And then he stepped into me. And he said, when he stepped into me, I stuck my hand down and said, in the name of Jesus, you flee. And he said, that robber dropped that gun and took off running. And he said, I immediately woke up and he said, one of the greatest revelations I ever had of Christ in me and my position and authority against the devil. See, when Satan comes against you, he's not just coming against you. He's coming against a God man, a a God woman filled and united with God himself. Why should I be afraid? What can man and what can the devil do unto me when God is for me and he's with me and he's in me? And the same ability and the same authority that Jesus has is the same ability and authority that you have. So you don't have to put up with the devil. You don't have to put up with what he's bringing in your life. You don't have to be like the average status quo Christian. We're conquering people. We're victory people. We're champions. We're winners. When you got in Christ and you got born again, you were born a winner. You don't have to be a loser anymore for the rest of your life. You were born a winner. But in order for you to see uh, that winning peace in your life, you've got to make a stand. You've got to make a stand. Remember Jesus' prayer, what we know as the Lord's Prayer. He said, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the things in your life that's going on, in your body, in your health, in your family, your relationships, your finances, if it's not lining up with the kingdom of heaven, then that means that Satan is trying to to get some things going and you need to turn that around. You need to change the scenery in your life. And how do you do that? Not by begging, not by pleading, not by whining, not by saying, God, where are you? What are you not doing? What are you doing? Where are you at? No, you realize who you are, who you're one with, where you're from, born from heaven, sent from heaven and to this earth, just walking on through and, and getting some victories and practicing on some devils for the future. And you win. And you put the devil in his place and you make your life and your relationships and your finances and your health and and, and your children look like heaven on earth in every facet of your life. But it's not going to happen just because Jesus provided it. You've got to believe it, you've got to receive it, and then you've got to begin to enforce it and walk it out. You've got to enforce it and you have to walk it out. You've got to be willing to, to do some fighting in a sense. Now, we're not fighting, again, we're not fighting for the victory. We're fighting from a stand place. In other words, we're enforcing the victory Jesus already provided. Amen. Amen. That'll get you fired up, you know. Play that next clip. <clears throat> really good. So it took a man willing to stand up and say, hey, you know what? We're not going to give in. We're not going to quit. We're going to win. We're going to go for victory. And it, it, it changed, changed the war. I mean, put Hitler out of his place, it took some time. 
But man, if they wouldn't have done that, uh, where we are today would be drastically, drastically different. Got to be willing to put up a fight there. And, but, but ultimately, we made a statement early. I want to go, go back to it. Is that you, you can't give an inch. And again, that's the reason they were in that position. Europe just kept giving up land, kept giving up land. And they're finally in a point where on, on the beaches of Dunkirk, there's over 300,000, I believe it was like 330,000 uh, British and French troops. And they're surrounded by the German army. And if they were captured, if they were conquered, the war is over. And so Winston came up with this great idea of, of sending these civilian boats to go over there and rescue them. Uh, but it all could have been avoided if, if people would have been vigilant, been, been, been watching, wouldn't have been sitting back on their rear end and allowing the devil, allowing the enemy to take ground. And that's why Paul said, or Peter said, you've you got to be sober, you've got to be alert, you've got to be cautious, aware, you've got to be vigilant, and, and, and don't give up any ground. And what happens is a lot of us, we give up ground, we give up ground, and all of a sudden we're in a position that we need a miracle. But if we would do one thing, we'd never be in that position. Don't give an inch. There's a powerful, powerful story uh, in the Bible. Uh, if you turn over your Bible over to Second uh, Samuel chapter 23, and this is when uh, David is talking about his mighty men. And this is one of my favorite stories, and it's so short, uh, but so powerful. Just a couple of lines. And, and you're finding out about his third mighty man. I mean, this is the, the manliest of the men, you know, that David had. And I want you to look at this guy. Uh, it says, Shema, son of A.G., the Herorite. He was the third of the three. So the, of the mighty men, he's talking about the, the big three. He said, Shema was on him. He said, the Philistines had mustered for battle at Lehi, where there was a field full of beans. Israel had fled before the Philistines, but Shema took his stand at the center of the field. He successfully defended it, and he routed the Philistines. And it was another great victory for God. In other words, the reason I like Shema, and I think this is so powerful, is because he wasn't, if, he wasn't willing to give up any ground, even a bean field. In other words, he said, these are our beans, you're not getting my beans. You're not going to get our, God gave us these beans. You're not getting our beans. And he thought it was so important that he stood there himself in the middle of a bean field to defend that from the enemy to make sure they didn't get any ground that God had given them. And the problem again with most Christians, and, and let's just be honest, most of us faith people, is that we know our authority, we know these in Christ realities in our head, we know these things, and yet we allow the devil just to take ground, take ground, take ground, especially physically. I'm going to talk about healing for a little bit here. Especially physically in the, in, the, in the health realm, we allow things to be taken, and we put up with a cold, we, we put up with an ache, we put up with a, with a pain, we put up with a headache, we put up with all these things until it gets to the point where you haven't been using your faith and now you're weak and emaciated in your faith and now you need a miracle. And most of the time when I have people call me or email me, it's, it's where they've done everything they know to do and, and the doctor said we can't do anything else. I, I've had three instances here in the last year where I've had somebody call me and they said, uh, we've got a couple of weeks. Well, my first question, I mean, I, I say it very kindly, but my, my first question I'm wondering is, why are you just now calling now? Why, why, when you've exhausted all of your other options and resources, now, why now are you calling me to want to pray and, and try to get a miracle? Why now? Why not, why not way back when, when the pain first started? When you noticed a little bit of a lump or a bump? Like, why not start taking authority then? Come on, guys, this, this, this is the real stuff. It, we, we know this to be true when it comes to, to training your body. I mean, you can't, you can't go over to Trim Gym over there and you hadn't lifted weights in five years and then throw up 350 on the bench press. It ain't going to happen. Like, I used to bench 350 when I was going to college. It ain't happening now. I mean, I still work out and I'm still active and I still think I look pretty good for 41, but I ain't putting up no 350. I'm going to put it up and then it's going to come right back down. Why? Because I, I haven't been pushing that hard. I haven't, been tra I haven't been doing that. I haven't been doing that. And so what happens for a lot of us is, man, we're faith people. 
But if you can't even resist a cold, and then you're going to resist a cancer? I mean, ultimately, yes, I understand. I mean, I've, I've been a big proponent of pushing this in the sense that, I mean, a cancer and a cold is really no different. It's just a sickness. But in our minds, one is small and one is big, and that's what kills people. Because what do we do when it comes to, to a fever, when it comes to a headache? Well, uh, you know, it's just a natural part of life. I'll just I'll pop an Advil, pop a Tylenol, no big deal. Just kind of put up with it a couple of days. It'll go away. But then you do that over and over and over. And you, you allow the devil to take ground and take ground and take ground and take ground. Until all of a sudden, now that it's something big, and now all of a sudden I'm in a position where I need some help. And I haven't been working my faith muscles in a while. And so you're kind of like these guys. Where Hitler kept taking ground and taking ground and taking ground and taking ground. Until all of a sudden uh, the whole world's about to collapse. And that's what happens in a lot of our, a lot of our lives is we wait till our life is about to collapse. And all of a sudden now I want to be big in faith in God. Well, but you need to be big in faith in God in the little things. Amen. Don't let the devil take your beans. Don't wait till he's trying to take your steak. Don't let him take your beans. Don't let him take the potatoes. Don't let him take anything. Why? Because Jesus died for those potatoes and those carrots. And he died for everything. He didn't design you to have to have headaches and just put up with it because that's the part of life. He didn't design you to have to go through life and save you so you had to have flu during flu season and allergies during allergy season. He did not die for you to have to experience those things. But if you just accept these things as just a normal part of life, well, everybody else may accept it as a normal part of life, but what's happening is the devil is gaining ground. He's gaining ground. You don't want to have any ground. When something shows up that's not supposed to be there, you resist that. Say, so, no, I'm not going to have a headache today. See, it's quiet because this is real. I'm not going to have a headache today. I'm not going to have a sore throat today. I'm not going to have those pains, those aches today. Just because I'm getting older doesn't mean I have to have those creaks and cracks today. Huh? Come on now. But see, we've bought in. I like talking about this because it's just real life. But we've bought into those things that as I get older, things are just going to fall apart. Right? As I get older, my mind's just going to go. As I get older, why? It's just a part of life. No, not for people from heaven. Not for people united with God. Yes, your body is going to change, and as you get older, you're going to get more wrinkles, and you're going to get a little saggier, but you don't have to experience the things that Jesus already bought the victory for. Come on, guys, in the Old Testament, I love going back and, and talking about the old guys and gals. And that in the Old Testament, it tells us that Moses, who was a sinner, remind you, he was a sinner not saved by grace, not, not the righteousness of God in Christ. Moses, it says that he died at 120, and his eyes weren't dim, and his strength wasn't diminished. Caleb went up to Joshua and said, I'm 80 years old, give me my mountain. He said, I'm just as strong today at 80 as I was when I was 40. And he wasn't saved. He wasn't filled with the life and nature of God. He wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. He wasn't redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. He wasn't seated at the right hand of God in Christ. He was living in a far lesser covenant than you and I. And for most of us, experiencing a better life than you and I. That should not be the case. No, no, no. There should be a difference between somebody who's saved, born again, sanctified, redeemed, righteous, and someone who is not. There should be better results. There should be a, a better degree of life. There should be more victory in that person that's saved than the person who is not. And yet, sadly, what's going on is that in Christianity and, and sadly, even in our faith circles, our faith people really aren't getting the results that they should be getting. Well, that's about to change. I mean, I'm a man on a mission, baby. We're going to get this thing figured out, and we're going to get some victories. That's why I love healing. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I mean, it's the thing that cranks my tractor. Vroom, gets me going. 
I love it because not only is, is, it, is it a vital truth and a peace that's really missing in all of churchdom right now. You know, the Bible says that Jesus went about doing what? Teaching, preaching, and well, we've done real good at the teaching part. We've done real done at the, good at the preaching part. We've sucked at the healing part. And yet it was a third of Jesus' ministry. Well, it should be a third of our churches. Not a third of the number of churches. It should be a third of what all the churches are doing. And yet we can't get it to work. Why? Because even most of us that are preaching it aren't standing and resisting even against the small things. And if the ones that are preaching it aren't standing against the small things, then the ones that are, the ones that are following the preaching aren't going to stand against the small things either. Don't let the devil take your beans. Keep your beans. It's good for your heart. Hey, if things are flowing, you're in good shape, you know. <laughs> so what are we to do with the devil? We are to, we are to resist him. And not in our own strength, we're resisting him through Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's in him that I live and it's in him that I move and it's in him that I have my being. So when Satan comes against me, he's actually coming against Jesus. But if he knows that you don't know that, man, he's going to whip your tail. That's why for me, I believe the most important message once you get born again is to understand who you are in Christ, your union with him. Because the more you begin to understand your union with him, the more invincible you will be in this world. And the more you understand who you are in him, you won't let him take your beans. Because you'll understand that his uh, MO, his method of, of operation is to take bit by bit by bit. Why? He's a deceiver. He's a sneaky little rascal. He's not going to come up and try to take the whole thing. He's going to come up and take a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit till you get so desensitized and you're not noticing everything that you're giving up until all of a sudden uh, you're on that last little bit and now you need a miracle. Well, let's don't get to the place where we need a miracle. God did not design you to go from miracle to miracle to miracle to miracle to miracle, especially in your body. He designed you just to live in divine health. Yeah, why? Because I've got the life of God in me. I'm full of his spirit and his ability. I've got the life of God in me. How many of you grew up in church and you grew up uh, singing that song? I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up a well down in my soul. Spring up a well that makes me... See, we sung that back then, and we're still stupid today. I mean, we were singing that back in the 80s, and we still didn't get the revelation that's the, of the truth that's found in that song. We sung it, but we didn't get it. And I'm telling you, it's as true back then as it is today, but we are a people. We're a group of people. We're not the only ones, but we are a people that will get a hold of this and be an example to the world of what happens when a man or a woman that's united with God understands their union and begins to walk that thing out just like it's Jesus walking on the earth himself because in all actuality, it is through you. So one more time, what do we do with the devil? You don't put up with him, you resist him. Why? Because he's out to kill you. So what am I going to do? We're going to turn around. You ain't killing me, I'm killing you. Somebody's going down, it ain't me. You put me in a corner, we're going to fight. You may get a couple punches, but I guarantee you we're going to win. I got a little Pastor Hagen in me. We're going to win. We're going to win. Praise God. Hey, before we go, we don't like to go without doing this. If you're sitting in here, you're watching online, you've never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, we want to make sure that you make that wonderful, wonderful decision today. doesn't matter how long you've gone to church. It doesn't matter what you've done in your life. I'm telling you the blood of Jesus is greater than you. It's greater than anything that you've ever done. Greater than anything you ever will do. So if you're sitting here this morning, you've never made that decision. I want you to make that decision this morning. Those of you that are watching online, same thing. We're going to pray this together. And if that's you, I want you to pray this. Believe this. Uh, say it. Receive this. Say this with me. Say, God, I come to you right now. 
and I realize I'm in need of a Savior. Your word says that if I would believe in my heart and confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, that I would be saved. So I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth Jesus as the Lord and the Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If you're sitting here this morning and you prayed that for the first time, please let somebody know. Let Alex know. Let James know. Let one of us know we've got some things that we want to get to you. Those of you that are watching online, if you pray that, email us, text us, write something on Facebook. We've got some things that we want to give to you because we ultimately believe that God has a great plan for your life and he didn't plan for you to go through life alone. He meant for us to do life together. We're stronger together. We're stronger together. So, Praise God. Say this with me one more time. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. The Lord, he is good and his mercies endure forever. The Lord is good to me and his mercies endure toward me forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Hey, who is it here? You're you're having some issues with, with your shoulder. I particularly say your right shoulder. Who is that? What's going on, sir? I have Yeah. And your right shoulder? Both on. Both on. Well, come up here real quick. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Hallelujah. Thank you for the life of God flowing out of my spirit, flowing out of his spirit, flowing into these shoulders, flowing into these, these muscles and ligaments. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to do anything. Hallelujah. That life and power, that healing is already on the inside of you because of your union. And we just release that by faith and flowing into your body and releasing, releasing, regaining all movement and motion and rotation the way God designed for this body to be and these shoulders to be. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Not according to who, what we've done, according to who he is and who we are in him. Hallelujah. You see, you need to understand that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You didn't have to do anything to earn it. You became the same rightness that Jesus is. And everything on the inside of you has been made right. And it has been made right so that way uh, everything that on the outside that's wrong would be made right. Right, because of the rightness of God on the inside of you. The real you, your spirit man. You see, your body was made to be affected by your spirit. Your body is a slave to your spirit. You see, when Jesus, when God made the body, the body was lifeless until the spirit of God got on the inside. And when the spirit of God got on the inside, all of a sudden the body began to move. Why? It's because who you are, the real man, the man on the inside, is supposed to affect what's on the outside. And so if what's on the inside, the real you is made right. It was filled with the life of God, the rightness of God. It's because that it was put in there so that it would affect everything on the outside. So that you, you have everything that you would ever need in all reality to walk in divine health. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's your shoulders? Huh? You ready to punch somebody? Huh? You give me a good punch. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands and let's just praise Jesus. He is the healer. He is our provider. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the ultimate champion. Hallelujah. And that is who you have been united to, the ultimate champion. The ultimate champion. You were born a winner. We'll go out of this world a winner. We'll remain a winner. But while we're in this world, we keep on winning. We wake up in the morning to win. We go to bed to win. Hey, come on. When you wake up in the morning, all the bells of hell ought to be going off. 
all the alarm bells going off because they just realize that you got up and you know who you are and you're going to go out and you're going to raise some hell. You're going to destroy some hell. You're going to take back what belongs to you in this world. And then not just for you, you're going to do it for others. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, some of you, you've been going through some stuff, and it's time to stop crying. It's time to start shouting. It's time to start rejoicing because the battle's already been won. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Come on, you are the healed. You are the rich. You are the blessed. You are the highly favored. Favor with God and favor with every single man and woman you come into contact with. Every door that you go through is yours for the taking. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be unto Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Say this with me. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I'm a winner, not a loser. I'm the healed. I'm not the sick. I'm the rich. I'm not the poor. I'm full of joy, not depression. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. I live a life of peace free of fear, free of anxiety, free of depression, because I know that in Christ, I always win. I always win. Hallelujah. Praise your Lord. All right, so say your name and then just tell what happened, what's happened for you this week. My name is Beatrice Naisiai. I'm from Kenya, Loitoktok, Kajiado County. The Lord has healed me from allergic diseases. I was allergic. Allergies. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I've received my healing this week. What's some things you've learned this week? I've learned the, the greatness in me of healing. I have the, impotent, the potential of healing in me. So, like yesterday, I went and found my son sick. He had a headache. I exercised the faith, and after some minutes, he told me, Mama, I'm okay. So I praised God. Amen. That's yeah. awesome.